world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Very pleased uh, to go over live all the way to Wellington to talk to uh, News Talk ZB reporter Aaron Darman. Uh, good evening, Aaron. Yeah, good morning from uh, sorry. New Zealand, literally New Zealand's parliament behind me. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so uh, they're calling uh, New Zealand uh, up here in uh, Britain the Hermit Kingdom. Uh, it's very difficult to get in and out. Uh, uh, Jacinda Ardern, at one point an incredibly popular leader, has pursued very hardline policies about COVID uh, and uh, involving lots of lockdowns, restrictions of your freedom. As I say, people can't get in or out, even New Zealanders. Uh, and it does look as if the tide of support for Jacinda is turning a bit. You now have this freedom convoy descending on Wellington. Uh, would that be a fair assessment that uh, the uh, Jacinda mania is fading down there? I think perhaps Jacinda mania is fading just a little bit. But ultimately, when you look at the popular uh, New Zealand vote uh, and, and the the majority really of New Zealanders, they do still back Jacinda Ardern. We look at some recent polls and there are still very much indications that the Labour government um, has the backing of the New Zealand people. But like you say, there are protesters out here with visceral anger and dissatisfaction for this government. And I mean, this is dissatisfaction that is sown like a seed over time. This is not just anti-mandate, anti-vaccine uh, protesters. These are protesters that have really have been dissatisfied uh, with the state for quite some time. And there are a number of issues uh, ranging sort of from those anti-mandate uh, issues to things like conspiracy theories um, that, that are uh, being trodden out here, uh, which, yeah, it, it, it's certainly uh, a tide turning, but I wouldn't say that Jacinda Mania has faded completely. Uh, is is her policy to pursue uh, that kind of uh, what many feel is the impossible dream of uh, COVID zero to get eliminate COVID altogether? Is that what she's trying to do at any cost? I think at this point uh, the answer to that is no. We're starting to reopen to the world at the end of this month to Australia. Then uh, next month, 15th of March, the rest of the world fully vaccinated travellers can come and go, and we get rid of that controversial MIQ, which has served New Zealand very well in terms of the number of cases, in terms of the number of deaths compared to, say, you in the UK and also around the world, but has also very much limited, uh, the ultimately, the people coming in and out of the country. And so I think when it comes when it comes to, to reopening to the world, when it comes uh, to COVID here in New Zealand, there is no doubt that this government has changed tack, uh, that Omicron will be effectively allowed into the community. It will ultimately spread uh, and the government has said look if people are double vaccinated if they're boosted that is our best opportunity now uh, to, to stop any COVID deaths but I think cases will certainly rise here in New Zealand. Uh, yeah because our Omicron I mean we, we, we had that here in Britain uh, Omicron arrived at uh, first everyone was panic stricken because the cases absolutely rocketed uh, but then we've discovered uh, it's uh, actually a mild variant it really wasn't killing anyone wasn't putting very many people in hospital uh, and actually was spreading antibodies through the country and as you probably know Aaron uh, on February the 21st uh, we're going to lift all restrictions every single one of them uh, so in a way, I suppose we've become the envy of the world. Uh, so Jacinda is, I think, recognising that and therefore softening the COVID grip a bit? She's certainly softening the COVID grip a bit and she is recognising that, look, we do need to reopen to the world. We can't stay isolated away from the globe uh, for forever. Uh, and the same goes as well for things like uh, vaccine mandates. At the moment, there are a number of industries, a number of jobs where you are required to be double vaccinated, but she's made it very clear that's not forever. Ultimately, here in New Zealand, uh, the government is putting much more responsibility, like, for example, in the UK, uh, on the people themselves, on the New Zealand people. And that means, look, get your COVID kits uh, set up so that you can uh, isolate at home, and, I mean, this is completely different, obviously, from our lockdown approach that we had for the first uh, phase and the first phases of this outbreak. And, uh, yeah, Jacinda Ardern certainly recognising, look, we need to change tack just a little bit. Uh, what's been the effect? Because you, you, you guys down there in New Zealand, you have uh, been through some very tough restrictions. We too had them for a while. 
uh, and they've had a devastating effect on our economy and we are now beginning to pay the price uh, financially, uh, economically and socially. Uh, what's been the effect on the New Zealand economy and indeed uh, the effect on you people socially of, of this two years of a kind of locked down nightmare really? There's no doubt that there has been a mammoth impact on the New Zealand economy. I mean, there's been parts of the sector, things like tourism, for example, where people can't come in and out, uh, that's been, that have been savaged. I mean, I don't know if you know Queenstown down in the South Island, sort of this holiday tourist hotspot uh, that effectively just has Kiwis now coming uh, to, to the city because no one else can. Uh, in terms of the social element of things, well, you just have to look behind me. There is that element of dissatisfaction. There is that anger uh, and frustration with the way that the government is operating. Uh, but, like Jacinda Ardern has said, uh, this is not a majority. And at this point in time, uh, New Zealand people and Kiwis as a whole are still behind this government. Obviously, as we reopen to the world, as we start to get more Omicron cases, as we head to this election, uh, uh, election next year, then we start to see where that tide turns and whether or not an opposition that is now far more effective than it was a couple of years ago uh, will, will, will go. Is there a, a sense, I mean, dis despite your uh, freedom convoy behind you there, is there a sense in New Zealand uh, that the nightmare uh, is at least beginning to end? You're at the beginning of the end of what has been a, a very long and difficult period. I mean, we've all been through it. Obviously, the sense here in Britain now is we really are almost... Uh, at uh, the, our destination point of returns of all our freedom and we're going to live with this now. Is there a sense uh, that New Zealand is edging towards that as well now? There is absolutely finally a light at the end of the tunnel. And for New Zealanders, I mean, that is, that is hope, ultimately. And it's something which, uh, which is really significant, I think, for people to go, OK, we finally can actually start traveling. But a lot of New Zealanders, because we're so far away from the world, things like the overseas experience, the OE after uni or high school is massive. It is ingrained in our culture. And not just that, but family members uh, and friends that are overseas, I have family overseas. And this has been a difficult time. It's been brutal at times, to be quite frank. But now there is hope, there is that light at the end of the tunnel. And there is the feeling that we are starting to live with this virus. We're starting to go, okay, Omicron will be in the community and we are able to deal with that and we are still able to do the things that we love. Uh, I mean, credit to Jacinda Ardern in so far as uh, whatever you think of her policies, I mean, she has succeeded in keeping your death rate incredibly low. Uh, is it something around about 50, 52 or something like that? Uh, um, but uh, for all her strengths, what, what would you say her weaknesses are, Aaron? I think ultimately uh, a, a, weak, a weakness perhaps for Jacinda Ardern is, is the ability to, to, to kind of see when to shift tack. It always feels like that this government is just a little bit reactive. We've seen it with a number of crises where they respond brilliantly, effectively in those initial phases, in those initial tranches. We are able to lock down or we're able to sort of recognise that this is a a traumatic event, say, with the Fakari White Island eruption or the March 15 terrorist attack, where we come together as a nation. But as that continues, as sort of a pandemic starts to play out over months and years, then the government starts to starts to lose a little bit of track because it's not a, anymore an immediate crisis situation, but it's sort of an ongoing crisis. And so I think Jacinda Ardern, ultimately, that would probably be, be a little bit of a weakness. It's not able to sort of act and... and Act instead of react uh, would, would be my assessment. And the other thing, Aaron, is uh, the people behind you on the Freedom Con Convoy, I don't know what the actual situation is, but what we read and what we hear is that Jacinda is uh, literally completely refusing to engage with them. Uh, is that a, a problem? I mean, should she perhaps uh, open some sort of dialogue with these protesters? Because, uh, as you quite rightly said at the beginning of our conversation, it's wrong to uh, depict all of these people as manic, extreme anti-vaxxers. Uh, I think they just want their liberty back. Uh, will she engage with them? She won't engage with them, but neither will any political party here in New Zealand and in this parliament, because... Here's the thing. These protesters, uh, yes, to a certain extent, there are a handful that are here for that anti-mandate. 
cause, but a lot of them are anti-vaccination, they are conspiracy theorists, and they don't actually really know at times what they're fighting for. If you went to go ask three of them, they would probably give you three different <laughs> answers. And, and you see some really extremist views. So I think that, to be honest with you, this government and all political parties are in their right not to engage because us media have had threats. We've had uh, sort of death threats and, and people shouting at us saying, look, you should be executed. We're not allowed effectively to go out into uh, the crowd because of that uh, threat to safety. And I think politicians here in New Zealand would, uh, with this very uh, aggressive uh, rabble of discontent, mm. uh, would probably have the same feeling. Uh, last question, really, Aaron. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I, f I forgot early in the morning for you. Uh, given what we've been saying, that uh, Jacinda is recognising uh, that uh, we've got to, be you have to begin the process of getting out of the COVID crisis. I mean, is there a feeling amongst those protesters behind you uh, that uh, their mission uh, is all is kind of working? Is there any optimism among them? That, I mean, really what they want, they just want their freedom back, don't they? They're going to get it, aren't they? Well, it, to a certain extent, you're right. I mean, the, the New Zealanders are going to get their freedom back, freedoms back. They are going to get their liberties back. Um, and this is what I mean. Like These protesters uh, are almost sort of not even aware of that. They're not even accepting of that. And, and I think uh, who knows how long these protesters um, out behind me will be here for. Um, the police say they could be here for days. Police have had to bring in major reinforcements. They've made um, 120, at last count, arrests. Uh, and, and this is the issue, is the aggression. It's, uh, sure, everyone here in New Zealand has a right to protest. Everyone has a right to have their say. But when you start um, pitching tents on Parliament's lawn, when you start with the aggression, with the violence, when you start assaulting police officers, then it becomes a problem. Uh, still a very good story for you to cover, though, Aaron. Uh, and thank you very, very much for... Good talk. Hot talk. talk. Bold talk. Talk radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.